The title is not meant to imply that there were no good anime this year, it's just that there weren't a lot of notable anime this year, and the few there were, I just sort of missed the boat on. Take Devilman Crybaby, for example. I appreciate its boldness and uniqueness in a medium that too often doesn't take risks like that. However, it just ended up not being my cup of tea. I liked its themes and ideas, but the brash way that it portrayed its sexual subject matter just wasn't something I clicked with. There were also a lot of sequels this year, most of which weren't bad, per se. Except for Steins Gate Zero. In fact, most of them were pretty good, like the third season of Hero Academia, which was overall a pretty good time. It just didn't have anything as impactful as the tournament arc from season two. But that comparison is a bit unfair, because the second season made an okay show into an amazing one, but going into season three, it was just business as usual. Again, sequels are good. Hero Academia was great, and one of my favorite series in Index finally got a sequel after five years. All I'm saying is that sequels can't be the only good thing coming out. We need some uniqueness. Speaking of which, Studio 3 Hertz and Trigger, who usually deliver on that front, kind of dropped the ball this year. 3 Hertz made a super bland Sword Art Online spinoff, which mostly covered all the ideas that the original SAO and its many imitators already did, but slightly less bad. Trigger, on the other hand, made Darling in the Franks, which was a bit bland in terms of Trigger anime. But a bland Trigger anime is still a pretty good time, it just kind of suffered from an awkward blend of many half-baked ideas instead of the clear, focused ideas that Trigger normally puts out. But who knows, maybe Trigger made Gridman really good, but I wouldn't know because I haven't seen it and many others because I haven't had the most normal of years this year. 2018 started off with the second half of my year abroad in Japan for college. Moving across the planet to another country that, despite all my anime wisdom, I still knew very little about was not an easy task to undertake. However, after the first few months, I was making friends, slowly understanding how everything worked, and making that place my home. But, especially near the back end of that year, the reminder of it all ending persisted in the back of my head. Which I tried not to let kill my mood during the last couple of months, but it was hard. And finally, back in August, the way of life I had grown accustomed to during that year ended. And since then, I've been a little, uh, mixed emotionally? But don't worry, I'm already feeling better than I was a few months ago, so I'm sure I'll be fine. All of this has not necessarily stopped me from watching anime, because you know me, I'll always make time for that. But it has stopped me from checking out the more experimental shows. Like, I could watch a seasonal show that might be really good, or I could just watch something I know will be good and put me in a better mood, like Cardcaptor Sakura or Pokemon Sun and Moon. Both of which are amazing at creating a very peaceful and happy feeling. Which is actually a benefit that anime has over other mediums like video games. Anime's controlled structure is very good at conveying a particular emotion. However, I did see some anime this year that were super good like Karakai Jozu no Takagi-san. Which is also good at creating a very pleasant feeling because the main couple in that show are perfect. The dude is always trying to prank the girl but she instead just flips it back in his face tenfold. Even their dialogue outside of major jokes are still playful and just a joy to watch. On the opposite side of the spectrum there was also Violet Evergarden which was really good at using a collection of little stories to tell one big story. It was by far the best emotional feely show since either Plastic Memories or Plantarian from 2015 and 16 respectively. And again, I did enjoy most of the sequels that came out this year. So it was still a good year for anime, even if there was not enough that blew me away or surprised me enough to want to make an entire top 10 list. I also still have faith in anime as a whole, because a lot of the 2019 anime look good, and Studio 3 Hertz and Trigger are both making things that look more ambitious than the things they did this year. So hopefully next time I can make an actual anime of the year video. But we'll see where things go from here. In the meantime, I'll see you all next time. Bye!